Okay, in this session we're looking at content descriptors. So last week you looked at the curriculum as a whole in broad brush, looking at the rationale and the aims of the curriculum and what curriculum involves. Now we're delving down into the nitty-gritty of what you need to teach your students. And that is described in the curriculum as content descriptors. So they're statements of what students need to learn, either they need to understand or be able to do. And we have knowledge and understanding content descriptors and we have processes and production um, content descriptors. So these give you an idea of specifically what students need to be able to demonstrate at the end of your two-year band or end of your class. Now they are broken into two-year bands so if you're only teaching one of those years then you'll need to negotiate with the other teacher of the other year of the band what you're going to be focusing on and so forth so that there's not too much overlap. Now the key thing I want you to be able to see and I've given you a breakdown of the design and technology content descriptors you need to be able to see that there is a progression. So what students learn in years one and two will be slightly different than what they learn in years three and four and what they learn in years five and six. You'll see similar words and you'll see similar core statements and there'll be some modifying words so that they will progress in their learning in terms of the complexity and their understanding of those concepts over their course of study in school. So this is called a spiral curriculum where we come back and re re revisit content every couple of years so that students progressively approach those concepts from increasingly more complex understandings. So have a look at the curriculum document. Um, I've given you a parallel breakdown for designer technology and you will see that that progression occurs. The other aspect of looking at the curriculum document as a whole in terms of the content descriptors is that you'll see it's broken up into different types of content. Now for design and technology there is a section on um, society, technology and society, how technology impacts upon the world. Um, so for very young kids it might be the idea that we have technology, um, that fire is a technology, that writing is a technology, and, and so forth, just sort of learning about that. Also, you'll see that we can look at how other cultures, particularly indigenous cultures and Australian indigenous cultures, have engaged with technology over the years. So there's a whole range of different things that we can learn about how technology impacts us. Then there are two main core context in the design and technology curriculum. One is around engineering and one is around food and fiber. So don't be too concerned about the terminology. Um, the engineering one is very much around students building things, making things. And the food and fiber production is learning about where food comes from, how it's produced, and also about nutrition and aspects of food preparation and making healthy food choices. So not particularly complex things. In the engineering one, students will go through things such as building bridges and paper planes and um, things of that nature, model towers, and they'll learn various concepts related to engineering. And if they eventually go off and become engineers, you will have laid the foundation of that learning in your class. But it's not particularly complex engineering as you might see taught in senior schools or at university level. We're looking at fundamental concepts around why things move, why things fly, how to make that movement occur, how forces occur, and it links very much in with what they'll be learning in science, but also a little bit around mathematics and the other learning areas as well. So the content descriptors give you all of these specific statements about what students need to learn. But it's not how we actually use them. In reality, you'll develop lessons and activities and projects and so forth that will address a whole range of content descriptors. 
Um, no one lesson will generally only address a single content descriptor. Normally it'll address several. And indeed, you'll see the processes of production content descriptors represent what is called the design cycle, where we go through a series of steps and stages around completing projects. And we'll be discussing that in a couple of weeks when we look at pedagogy. So it assumes that you're going to be doing multiple content descriptors in a project. Um, so while for convenience, the content descriptors are um, very specific and individualized, in reality, they're used in combination. Likewise, you may use content descriptors from other learning areas, such as mathematics, English, whatever, um, as part of your lesson. And we should always be looking for ways of addressing multiple content descriptors, regardless of which learning area they come from, in any particular lesson or activity that you develop and use with your students. Now, the content descriptors in themselves are somewhat open to interpretation, and they are intentionally meant to be so, so that as a professional teacher, you will come up with activities that address those content descriptors. But of course, as a beginning teacher, you're not quite sure about what some of these content descriptors mean and how to go about addressing them. So included in the curriculum are examples, and we call these elaborations. Now, they are simply examples of ways of going about teaching those content descriptors. And again, as I said, we very rarely teach a content descriptor on its own. So an elaboration would normally address multiple content descriptors. For convenience, though, in terms of the writing, they're specifically attached to individual content descriptors. But when you come to develop your own lessons and units and so forth, you will look for elaborations or activities, lessons, units, whatever, that address a range of content descriptors. But for now, they provide you with a good set of examples of ways of going about addressing those content descriptors. But as a professional teacher, graduating from Griffith University and from my course, I would hope that you never use the elaborations. Um, you should be able to come up with your own activities based upon your knowledge of your students and what they're interested in, what you are interested in yourself and what you like teaching, but also what the resources are and the focus of your school and local community and other activities occurring in the school. It might be book week or there might be a maths or science competition going on. There'll always be opportunities to tailor what students are learning and the activities that they're doing to suit the circumstances and interests and everything else. So just taking a generic elaboration as described in the curriculum would be rather poor teaching. Now, it's fine to use it as an example and as a starting point, absolutely perfectly suited for that. But that shouldn't be your end point by any means. Now, another aspect of what you, I'm going to get you to do this week is to look at where you can get other ideas, other elaborations from. And I provided you with an activity where you're going to go and look at some of these collections and see where you can gain ideas for your lessons that also address the content descriptors, but come from other sources, provide new ideas. And then also using generative AI to be able to generate ideas for you. So there's a whole range of different ways that you can go about coming up with ideas on how to address the content descriptors. So have a look at the content descriptors, look at how they're organized into different sections, particularly how they, for design and technology, it starts with um, society and, and technology and society, looks at those various um, overarching contexts of engineering and food and fiber production. And then you've got the processes and production um, content descriptors, which essentially go through a design cycle where students investigate and define a problem, then they generate a whole lot of ideas and design their solution to that problem. Then they look at implementing the problem and produce whatever's involved in solving the problem. Then they evaluate their solution and test it and see how it can be improved. And finally, there is a content descriptor around working in teams and collaborating and managing their projects. So they're also things that they're going to be learning as part of 
their technology studies. And again, particularly when we look at pedagogy and the way we can go about teaching technologies, you'll see how that um, design cycle and process of going through those various stages is a fundamental core aspect of teaching technologies. So also have a look at digital technologies. It doesn't have quite as strong a contextual basis as designer technology, but it still breaks things down and has that same processes and production skills where students go through those stages in completing solutions to problems.